Hey everyone, Regina here with Starter PPC. Today we're going to talk about product titles. I'm going to show you how I think through uh, what the product titles should be in the ad because sometimes whatever the product titles are on the website makes sense for people that are browsing through your site, but different product titles are going to work better for the ads. And so you have the ability to override the product titles inside of the Google Merchant Center, the GMC, um, and then feed the over written product titles into your ads. And this can be hugely impactful because when you're running uh, shopping, shopping campaigns, I'm sure you've noticed by now, you have very little control over the targeting. In fact, there's no keywords. Um, there's no audience audiences, right? If you're running Pmax, you can put in an audience signal, but <laughs> the jury is out as far as whether that actually does anything. If you're running standard shopping, like we are in this camp in this uh, account, then you don't even have the ability to do audience signals. So uh, your hands are kind of tied when it comes to targeting, and you're leaving it up to the algorithm to um, understand the product, understand the users that are searching for that product, why they might want it, my, why they might choose to click on your shopping ad over the next shopping ad in the search in the uh, shopping results. Um, and so to get that extra click through rate and to make sure the algorithm really understands who you want to target and why the person should care about your product, um, here's how to think about product ads. Uh, product titles. So I'm going to walk you through the process that I go through when I'm thinking about whether to do product title overrides and how to structure the product titles um, in terms of the most important keywords at the front and the rest of the keywords at the back. So um, here we go. So the first thing that I do, obviously, is I go into the shopping campaign and I go over to the products area and I see what are the product titles right now, right? Because you want to get an idea. Now, I've already overridden the product titles here, so what you're seeing is not going to um, be what they were before, but um, it was basically things like this one said coffee table. It started with coffee table, round. Um, uh, this one said thin Thin is actually the, the furniture line. So these are like high-end furniture um, products. Um, thin surface mount, vanity light. Uh, this one said moon, again, uh, a furniture line. Moon, luxury dining table. So you get the idea. And uh, I'm going to show you what, what I thought through in order to decide to change it to these product titles that you see now. So the first thing that I do after I look through what are the product titles now is I, um, uh, well, okay, I guess the first thing I would do is click onto the uh, one of the top products and view a preview of the ad because you can see it right here. This is what the ad's gonna look like, right? And it's in its smallest, most compact form. This is the, I guess, worst case scenario of what the ad placement will be, be seen um, like from the user. So uh, you're, you can see that you don't have a lot of real estate, right? <laughs> like a lot of real estate as far as the keywords are concerned. Um, maybe you, if you're lucky, you have four words that you can shove in there, but usually it's more like three. Uh, if your words are really long, then sometimes it's two, two words. <laughs> um, and that's what the user is going to see. However, the algorithm sees the entire product title. Um, and so when you're thinking about the, um, targeting, um, and you're trying to, communicate to the algorithm, hey, this is uh, what my product is. These are the these are the most important keywords that I want you to uh, bid on in, in my search terms. This is what I want to see. So uh, th that's going to be your product title. Obviously, you also have the product description. You also have the the um, like values and attributes that are that are um, given through the product feed. OK, and you can see those here if you scroll down. Uh, product attributes. You can see that it has a price. It has, um, it actually has a brand. It has a commission uh, on condition. It has obviously GTIN. GTIN is so important. We're still trying to get um, some of these GTINs filled out in this account. Um, and then sometimes there's even like metal. There's an attribute called metal, uh, uh, not metal, but material, right? So in Shopify, there's a place where you can enter the material and that should be fed through into the shopping feed. So these are all things that are important, all things to look for. But I would think that the, uh, the algorithm and the, the end user, the title is going to be the most 
impactful thing by far. So it's the first thing I look for descriptions and value attributes after, after I override the titles, maybe I will start looking at those. So, um, all right, so I've now previewed the the product and I start thinking about it, right? Like, okay, this is a unique business because why? Uh, this is a unique user because why? Um, what's gonna make them wanna click over something else? If you're having a targeting issue, right? If you're seeing low search terms that the algorithm's bidding on and you can see that under insights and reports and then uh, search terms, then you're gonna um, be thinking, okay, why does the algorithm think that it should bid on this term for this product and not not my you know more ideal term search term so um just do some thought process maybe click through two or three of the top products that are spending the most that's step one step two would be open a new tab in google and pretend that you are the end user and you're uh searching for that product what are you going to search for okay so in this case um, let's say you want to buy a vanity light um, and you want it to be like very fancy. You're looking for a certain style. So our, our ideal users in this case are people that are actually looking for the designer, right? Like they are furniture enthusiasts. They have the money to buy luxury uh, furniture and they already have the designer in mind. That's our lowest hanging fruit. Those are the people that are gonna convert the highest. And they're also the people that are gonna click the, the click the most. So if you're searching for um, just, uh, if you're just searching for like van vanity, uh, uh, bathroom vanity light, bathroom vanity light. Um, Hi there, quick interruption. Do you know the main thing that prevents small business owners from getting their Google Ads account into a position to grow and scale? Budget. A lot of businesses, especially those that are just starting out, have limited budgets. And so because of this, they're turned away by most ad agencies because most ad agencies have minimum budget thresholds that they're willing to work with. So what happens is the business owners end up learning Google Ads themselves. And the problem with that is that most of the advice online is geared towards larger accounts. And the advice doesn't have any of those strategies or tricks that can kickstart the algorithm into giving a small account a leg up over larger competitors. So it often just doesn't work and the business just ends up losing money month over month. If this sounds familiar, Starter PPC can help. We offer Google Ads management services that are designed for accounts that have between $1,000 and $5,000 budgets. And because all of our clients are just starting out, we've come up with ways to keep our management fees significantly lower than most agencies. Because we know that every dollar saved on management fees just goes towards the ad budget, which is gonna help the algorithm gather speed and power. So if you're serious about growing your business and you'd like a team of Google Ads experts to help you without breaking the bank, check us out at starterppc.com. Okay, back to the video. All of the search terms are going to be bathroom vanity lights, okay? And you can see the pictures of the vanity light, all right? So in my opinion, the fact that it's a light and the fact that it's for your bathroom and, the, and what the actual thing looks like, right, like round bulb made with brass, you know, uh, detailing, the picture is going to take care of that. Now, the algorithm has to know these things, but it tells me, okay, we don't need those words to be one of our top two to four words in the front of the product title, where we're actually going to get the real estate that gets the click. So I don't need to say the words bathroom, vanity light, brass detailing in the beginning of the product title. What, what do I want to say? Okay, I want to see the name of the designer because in this case, and this is true with a lot of products, you guys, the thing that's going to get you those low hanging fruit users is the, um, uh, what's the word? Competitive advantage that your product has, which in this case, it's made by a famous furniture designer. Let's go back and see what the famous furniture designer is. Juniper Design. Okay, Juniper Design luxury. Um, so that's what we decided to put in the front here. So, you know, someone searching for Juniper um, bathroom vanity light gets these search result results. Uh, this one says it's for the bathroom. I can see that. Um, this one says Lark. In fact, a lot of these say Lark. We're actually out of budget right now, which is why our ad isn't showing. I'm probably also not... Um, the target, the target market to buy this. So the algorithm might just be choosing to not show me that ad and save the budget for someone else. Um, Castell, right? So 
I would think in this case that putting the designer, the brand, the furniture line are way more important than, than putting what the actual product is. So I'm going to structure it where, um, yes, I still include what the product actually is in the product title, right? It is a bathroom vanity light and it does have brass detailing, but I'm going to put that at the end of the product title. And at the beginning, I'm going to put my most favorite target keywords, which in this case is brand, designer, product line, um, and as well as the word luxury. Okay. We've decided that luxury is a very important keyword because it is the fit. It is the reason why our bathroom light costs $570, whereas the vast majority of the bathroom lights that come up on the search results are just a hundred bucks. Um, so it's a unique product and we're putting what makes it unique in the front. Um, so I hope, I hope this has helped. I think that what I've seen is a lot of um, clients will come in and the first word that they have is chair, you know, white chair in the product title. And that that's great for the website itself. When you, when you land on the product page, it can say white chair because the person who's already on the website already knows what type of brand they're looking at. They're already okay with the prices. They're already, you know, well-versed because they've made it to the site and they've clicked on the ad that showed the pricing and everything else. So at that point, Sure, call it a white chair. That's going to distinguish it from the black chairs that you have on your website. But in the case of the ad, we don't need chair to be the first keyword. We need our favorite keywords at the front because that's how we're going to communicate to the algorithm what our low hanging fruit user is and to the user why they should click on ours and have a higher click through rate uh, than we otherwise would. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, Regina here with Starter PPC. Just wanted to hop on video and do a quick public service announcement to tell everybody that keyword management is not dead. Um, I think that uh, a lot of uh, people get started with Google Ads. They do a couple of, uh, they add a couple of negative keywords in the beginning, and then they 